there and welcome to PhD at Living. We've briefly covered the history of explosives before, but one of the most groundbreaking, literally, discoveries in the history of energetic materials was the advent of dynamite by Alfred Nobel in the 1860s. But I'm getting way ahead of myself. Around the 1840s, the explosives community was still relatively in the Dark Ages. Black powder had been around forever, but very little in the way of new explosives had been developed. One probable reason is the organic synthesis community in general was still in its early stages. After all, Friedrich Wohler had just synthesized the first organic material in 1828. Ignore that urea, that molecule, is extremely small, and Wohler did it accidentally, and you can see that this stuff can be pretty complicated. Tack on the additional difficulty and energetics of keeping all your digits whilst making them. At any rate, starting in 1832, nitrocellulose, nitroglycerin, and TNT were all first synthesized within about 35 years of each other. Schoenbein synthesized nitrocellulose accidentally in his kitchen at home using his wife's apron, TNT was invented as a dye instead of an explosive, and our main man nitroglycerin, NG, was so sensitive that its inventor, Ascanio Sobrero, didn't even think it had a practical purpose. That is not exactly a rigorous application of the scientific method. NG is an incredible explosive in its own right and is more powerful than TNT, but it has the unfortunate drawback of being wicked sensitive. Sensitivity here we're talking about is usually in three different parameters. Impact sensitivity, friction sensitivity, and electrostatic discharge sensitivity. While you can and should test more ways that the material might be sensitive, these three capture a number of the ways that people would normally handle an energetic. Impact has two things that you put your energetic between and smack them together. Friction is essentially the same, but instead of smacking, you do more of a rubbing mechanism. And ESD is how much electrostatic energy can you discharge on your energetic to initiate it. And G, as a liquid at room temperature, is extremely sensitive to impact. Interestingly enough, however, its friction and ESD sensitivity are on par with other common explosives such as PETN and RDX. Anywho, that impact sensitivity, along with thermal stability, which is an entire other bag of worms, is what caused a number of injuries and fatalities to people working with nitroglycerin in its early life cycle, which is unfortunate. Somewhere along the line, it was discovered solid NG was less sensitive than liquid NG, except when you tried to thaw it, then it frequently detonated, so that wasn't the answer either. Enter Alfred Nobel. He and Ascanio Sobrero, the inventor of NG, crossed paths while they both worked for Palouse in Paris in 1850. While Sobrero really didn't dig NG, Nobel, like a good Swede, was all about the explosives. For the next 15 years, including through the death of his brother in an NG-related accident, Nobel kept tinkering with the stuff. The story goes that a newspaper accidentally reported Nobel's brother's death as Alfred's own, and he saw the newspaper call his legacy as a merchant of death. This led to Nobel wanting to change his image pretty severely, and that led to the endowment that eventually became the Nobel Prizes. In 1867, Nobel struck pay dirt. He discovered that if you soaked the NG in Kieselger, German for diatomaceous earth, the explosive performance was maintained, but the sensitivity was wildly decreased. Nobel named the new material dynamite. What's diatomaceous earth? Basically just ground up fossilized remains of microscopic single cellular algae that's almost exclusively silica. Some of the critical logistical and safety pro I got a haircut, all right? I don't film these on the same day. I have a family and a life. I can't just spend all day in a spare bedroom. For it doesn't matter. Some of the critical logistical and safety protocols for explosives were developed during this time, with the key ideas that number one, the purpose of an explosive, regardless of its sensitivity, is to release the energy in its chemical bonds, and number two, the explosive doesn't always do that when, you know, you want it to, Nobel made his buildings cheaply and with blowout walls. The idea is one of the walls would purposefully fall away during an NG detonation because you didn't want to confine the detonation. I say detonation here instead of explosion because I'm pretty sure most NG accidents transition to a detonation regardless of how you initiate them. An added benefit is when you lost the building, and believe me, the odds are not in your favor of keeping a nitrator indefinitely, you could replace it pretty cheaply. In addition, the buildings were placed pretty far apart, so you know, you'd only lose one at a time, and were usually built into dirt bunkers to deaden the blast. Think your job's bad? There was a guy in Nobel's nitrators whose job it was solely to watch the thermometer of the mix. He was given a one-legged stool, too, because if he fell asleep, everybody in the building could die. This person dutifully, unceasingly, because his life depended on it, watched the temperature of the nitrating mix. He controlled it with a water bath. 
If the temperature got slightly too hot, he'd shout, STUN BY, they were mostly in Scotland, to the other person in the building. Side note, having as few people in an energetics building as possible and having as little contact time with the energetic, two more guiding principles of explosive safety. If he still couldn't get the temperature of the reaction down with even more water, he would shout, let her go! And then a huge crunch of cooling water would rush into the vessel. The NG reaction would be ruined, but the operators would still be alive. So there's that. While Nobel is best known for dynamite, he also revolutionized initiation with the invention of the blasting cap. Nobel recognized that NG had a hard time being reliably detonated with a fuse, so he needed something that would pop the good stuff every single time. Enter the detonator. Nobel's first blasting cap was composed of mercury fulminate, this molecule here. Mercury fulminate is a metal organic salt, meaning it has a metal cation and a polyatomic organic anion. These materials, which include things like lead azide, lead stiffnate, copper acetylide, etc., tend to be extremely touchy primary explosives, and mercury fulminate is no exception. Nobel's blasting cap wasn't exactly crazy innovative, it just added one more piece to the explosive train. The fuse, instead of lighting the NG, would light the mercury fulminate. Then the mercury fulminate would transition to a shock, and that would reliably initiate the NG. Alright folks, that's a straight dope. Alfred Nobel, the creator of dynamite and another of Sweden's great contributions to society. See y'all next time! You wouldn't hear a dump truck driving through a nitroglycerin plant!